want to uh, clear up uh, so that uh, we can move on. Uh, it sounds funny on those of uh, at home. But number one, just uh, take note, uh, whenever you flush the toilet, yeah, make sure the handle returns back because this new uh, toilet flush uh, is very light. Most of us maybe at home likes the one that pumps like a motorcycle. <laughs> Okay, and we leave it there, and it doesn't return. So in my office, every Sunday, I'll sit there and listen. If there is, you know, that song goes, listen to the rhythm of the falling wind. Yeah? So uh, when I'm hearing it nonstop, that means the flush did not come back. <laughs> okay, so just ensure us, uh, you know, we want to save water also, uh, that uh, when you flush, make sure the handle returns. And flush likely only. <laughs> Sounds funny to speak on Sunday on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, those many of you have received the SOP that I've sent out. Uh, normally, uh, we are just going to repeat it. I know because generally, uh, from experience, only half of you do read it or take, pay attention to it. So, a <laughs> couple of things here. One, uh, we don't need to scan your MySajatra anymore. Uh, however, we need you to just show your status. Okay? Uh, if you have an issue with that, we suggest you write into uh, our minister KJ. Uh, give uh, much grace to our COVID team. They are just doing their responsibility. Amen. Uh, more importantly, I think it's so important that when, there are all these rules, yes and no, masks and all that. Uh, we're doing it all those things uh, for one. Uh, as we go into endemic uh, nation itself, uh, what the government basically is saying, you're already big enough, chiki ku chiki, sendiri jaga sendiri. If you are sick, you are sick lah. Huh? Okay, so that means as a body of Christ, all the more as a family, we also have to make sure that we keep the body, uh, you know, to the best of ability in terms of the necessary stuff we need to do. So inside here, we keep our masks on, and when we have refreshments, uh, you know, have your kui, have your cake. When today we don't have, <laughs> okay? When you have it, then thereafter I would suggest. Put on your mask. I know the minister said outside not necessary to, but if you are speaking at a kissing distance from each other, you know what I mean? Yeah, what do you say? Uh? <sighs> okay. Then we will advise you to put on a mask. Lah. Okay. Uh, not to say for anything, we also want to be concerned for you and your own family. Okay, but someone said, Pastor, are you being paranoid? You must have faith. During the MCO when we did funerals, there are people who tell us, my master, you must have faith. Shake my hand now at the funeral. I say, okay, lah. I shake your hands. Then I sanitize it lah, for your sake. But the thing is, let's keep uh, our spirit right because we come here to worship God and not get entangled with you know, rules that upset us and then spoil your worship. Amen? And then secondly, prefer each other in love. Lah. Yeah? Okay? Uh, there are some people who say, ah, no need to wear this one. Keep it outside. Okay, otherwise, very susah. It's, it is a modern day uh, eat food off of the idol. No? It's a simple thing whether you want to put your mask on. The whole point is preferring each other in love. And more importantly, we bear witness to his presence. Amen? Because people will come and say, what kind of funny bunch of fellas here? You know, because we get sidetracked by all this. Yeah, rather than the Lord. So these are the three thoughts that I have in mind, even as we move in the endemic. And if as the government slowly eases things, then we see how it goes. So you might notice certain things are still in progress, still on working things on. And I said uh, two years ago and now, okay, there are things as we have done 20 years ago, uh, things that might work in terms of principle, but we have to see how it can be done towards a newer generation and things we're facing today. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, uh, this is a good time to make announcements because thereafter you will take communion. So to make sure our spirit is right after we're talking about this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's just take a moment as we take our communion. If you have your communion, you hold it in your hands and uh, we will take it one element at one time so you don't have to tear it all together. Uh, as you take your communion this morning, we just want to encourage you to... Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what Pastor Karin is signaling. Anyway, I did say don't take, don't open yet. 
<laughs> okay. Thank you, Lord, for the excitement to take your communion this morning. Hallelujah. As you take your communion this morning, we just encourage you to just uh, take a moment before the Lord, even as we walk into a season of uh, the Holy Spirit. And we encourage you to just look to Him, allow Him to speak to you. Whatever odds and challenges that you face, whatever you know, things that has been struggling in your heart that seems to just uh, you know, reflect in our attitudes and our actions that betray us before the Lord, you know, come before Him and ask Him to bring that healing and bring that restoration so that you stand before Him with clean hands and a right spirit within you. Would you just take a moment before the Lord, before we uh, pray and then uh, take the different elements separately. Father of infinite love and mercy, we come before you this day. We acknowledge, Lord, that we are sinners. We need your mercies each morning, Lord. We need your grace. And we come here right now, Father, acknowledging, Lord, Father, there are attitudes, actions, thoughts, desires, Lord, omissions on our part that betray us before you. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, when we think we have all the answers and we are even justifying and holding our offences towards others. Or, Father, when our self-righteousness, O oh Lord, Father, permeates above, O oh Lord, mercy shown to others. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, when we think when we've been in church a long time, we know it all. And forgive us, Lord, when we come before you, Lord, taking your word and your presence for granted, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Today we come before you, Lord, not by our own righteousness, not what we can do, O Lord, but what Christ has done on the cross. We come here right now, Lord, leaning on your assurance that as we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive us and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so, Father, we come before you, acknowledging, Lord, we have sinned against you. Forgive us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord. Purify us. Make us whole. So that, Lord, our lives, O oh Lord, be ready, O oh Lord, to be filled with the new things that you have for us, O oh Lord, as you take us further with you. And so, Lord, we lean on that assurance as we come humbly, soberly, acknowledging who we are before you. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, Father, for the new life that we have in you. In Jesus' name. We're going to take the uh, crackers. If you have it. Just live up to the Lord. Father, as we take the Lord, this biscuit, Lord, it represents the body of Christ broken for us on the cross. We take it with much gratitude, with much thanksgiving, Lord, knowing without the work of the cross, we would not have that opportunity to come to your saving grace. And so this day, even as we are called to walk worthy of that work, worthy of the calling you place upon us, Lord, help us, O oh Lord, to, to, to walk, O oh Lord, righteously and walk with much thanksgiving each day, knowing, Lord, that it is not by our own strength we can do it, but by your Spirit. And so, Lord, we thank you for that new life we have. In Jesus' name, let's take it.
that's the lip of the cup. Father, as we take this cup that symbolizes the blood of Jesus shed for us on the cross, thank you, Lord, for the pricelessness and the preciousness of the blood of the Lamb that now has made the way before your throne of grace open to all who would call upon the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege given to us to be your children and the privilege to call you Abba Father. Help us never to take that for granted, that we can seek you, O oh Lord. We can come before you. O oh Lord, Help us to bring, O oh Lord, give us that passion, O oh Lord, to go forth and bring that message that the way home to you is now open to all who will call upon the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's take the cup. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for this time of worship and communion. Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for, oh Lord, your cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, once again. Okay. You know, that is a subject that all of us are finding it challenging. That is the uh, subject about waiting. And uh, when we wait for people, it is something we all don't like. Yeah, uh, when I was in school, uh, we used to come up with a phrase among our friends. Uh, and we say, Penantian itu suatu penderitaan. Waiting is suffering. And some of us will know that. Uh, especially if we wait for our spouse and kids to get ready for church, for example. Yeah. My wife will say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, waiting in the traffic jam. Yeah. You know, every day, you know, here, if you want to leave the office, first you've got to beat the UCSI jam. <laughs> and then once you go out there, you've got to beat the 3KL jam. And the same thing happens in the morning when you come. Even at 7.30 in the morning when it comes, you got to beat the Sri KL gem. And then when you come in, you got to beat the UCSI gem just to come in. And all this waiting, you know, and when we go to the supermarket, we don't like to wait because it's like, man, look at that long line. People book up while they're lining up to pay. Is that too long? Waiting has never been our strength, you know. But someone once said this, all things come to him who waits, provided he knows what he's waiting for. Yeah. And uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 3, talks about Jesus raising from the dead. And last week, Pastor Corinne talked about the ascension. And, when, and before that, when Jesus resurrected to the ascension, yeah, he appeared at least 10 times to person, persons. Uh, and uh, in, we can see it recorded in the Gospels and the book of Corinthians when we see Paul talks about Jesus appeared before like about 500. We see he appeared before the two women yeah, and the disciples. And he gave commission to them. First he said in Matthew 28, we all know that. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them to obey all things. In that whole process, a lot of times as Christians, we miss that one line where Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always. Always. Now, as I said before, many Christians say, Pastor, what is the vision, the television of the church? It is the same. Every church you go, but it's different. When I went to SIB, they, yes, we word it differently. <laughs> In high praise, we say, building the people who shape the world. How do we build? By sharing the gospel because we believe the gospel changes lives. Yeah? Other church might say, go, growth, generation. Others might say, this, that. The whole point still, we cannot run away. Because the last very commandments that Jesus gave was go and make disciples of all nations. Yeah? Before he ascended. During his 40 days here. And he gave one verse that is key in Acts chapter 1. He says, look, 
you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You shall be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, this too, we all know. This, in fact, from this scripture tells us, this is the last thing Jesus said, because verse 9 says, and then he ascended. Yeah? The last thing he says, he says, Jesus is like going to go stand in his position, for example, in the movie. He says, okay, guys, I'm going to tell you one more thing. You will be my witnesses. You will receive the Holy Spirit. You will receive power. Power to do what? Into a lot of wrong theology today. Power to be blessed. Power to be rich. No, it says power to be witnesses. In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, today's topic, most of us will know. I would encourage you to just pay attention to for a moment and shut off what you already know. Because actually, if you've been a Christian for a long time, you should know most of the things in the Bible. <laughs> yeah? But listen to what the Bible says. You shall receive power. Yeah? And then Jesus ascended. Now, after the ascension, it's the next thing in what we call in our church history, Pentecost. Yeah? Pentecost. And that is so important. Pentecost talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that's where our series for this month is based on the Holy Spirit, the waiting, receiving, and going. Yep. I, I remember last year we did also pandemic, lockdown, and Pentecost. Now, some of you might say, Pastor, I don't remember you speak about the Holy Spirit. The great thing about being recorded is that it's recorded. <laughs> so you can always find the sermons there. In line with talking about the Holy Spirit, we have a workshop with uh, Pastor Yi Tamwan, who's going to talk about baptism of the Holy Spirit. And in that process, he'll be also sharing the uh, a brief introduction to the Pentecostal movement and revival, yeah, in, in, in where we are part of it in terms of being Pentecostal charismatic. Amen? So uh, we encourage you to sign up. Uh, it is on site. We don't plan to do it on live stream. Yeah. Uh, there are things that we are testing out to see how things are. Yeah. So, uh, and also giving the opportunity to Pastor Yi to pray for people. So it's a bit difficult to pray on a TV screen. Only in the US you can do it. Yeah, in Malaysia, we haven't tried it yet. Put your hands on the screen right now. In the name of Jesus. Yeah? So we want that have that ability for him, the opportunity for him to be praying for you. So do come and sign up. It's just on one Saturday uh, uh, on the um, 21st. Amen. Okay. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? Let me go quickly. We all know he is part of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The only problem for most Christians is the Father I know, the Son I also I know. But the Holy Spirit, very mysterious. So we better don't know. Some people think that the Holy Spirit is like the force in Star Wars. You know, may the force be with you. We don't know much more than Him. And for some Christians, the Holy Spirit is only the servant. He seems to be the one doing all the things. So let Him do all the things. So servant not important. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit He's part of the Trinity. He's God is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yes, when we sing most of our worship songs on the Holy Spirit, we don't worship the Holy Spirit per se. We don't say, Holy Spirit, we worship you. Most of the time, all the Holy Spirit songs is inviting Him to come, stir our hearts, bring a renewal, move across our souls, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Amen? And so we as a church believe the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Very important doctrine that we must have and we must agree in the church. We believe the Holy Spirit comes as a comforter. He brings people into repentance and faith in Christ Jesus. And when we come to know Him, He helps us in that transformational change that happens in our lives as we follow Jesus Christ. Amen? He plays that role. That's why He is that comforter. He is the encourager. He is what we call the parakletos. If I would put it, he is that pacer in your race. Someone who's running alongside with you and say, hey, pick yourself up. Come on. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on. That's how you do it. Now, some say, how does that work all together? Well, when we pray, for example, we pray to God the Father as led by the Spirit of God as He puts that burden to pray, whether it's by groaning or words or in the Spirit. You want to pray because the Spirit is stirring you, you know. And if you pray, your access and your authority to pray is in the name of Jesus because you don't approach God the Father in your righteousness because we have none. We approach Him by the righteousness of Christ placed upon, right, upon us right now as His children. 
And so when we pray, we pray to God the Father as led by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? So that is one example of it. I leave the rest to other sermons. So in Romans chapter 8, great book to read, verse 12 to, 7 talks, 12 to 17 talks about our position in Christ. It is a very important passage. It talks about how we are now children of God who have been saved through faith in Christ. Yeah, and Paul wants us to have nothing to do with our old self. Now that you have been saved, you have nothing to do with your old self. That is so important. Why? Because those who are children of God are led by the Spirit of God. For all who are led by the Spirit of God, Romans 8, 14, are children of God. In other words, if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are children of God. You are children of God because you are led by the Spirit of God. If I put it negatively, you are not a family of God if you are not led by the Spirit of God. Now here, in this context, I know today a lot of people like context. Yeah, in this context, Romans 8, it's not talking about leading you to find a new job or find a new girlfriend. Of course, in the general bigger picture, the Holy Spirit does guide you. In this context, Romans 8, it tells you, now that you are walking away from your past, you have faith in Christ, God wants to make, make you more and more like Christ. So, you know you're led by the Spirit of God when you are moving further and further away from that towards His wonderful light. In other words, there is that change. There is a transformation that happens and that brings glory to God. You know then you are led by the Spirit of God. But if you are still here, that means if you were, for example, uh, not talking about anybody, for example, if you are a stingy poker, yeah, before you became Christian, now that you say, oh, now I'm safe, and you are still a stingy poker, yeah, you say, Pastor, what is a stingy poker? It's a word we use when we are old. Uh. <laughs> yeah, stingy poker, you're a selfish fella, and after 20 years as a Christian, you still hold that pangkat of stingy poker, and you say, I'm a Christian. But the old nature of the flesh is being a stingy fellow. The new nature that reflects Christ is ought to be one that is generous in the Lord. Now some of you say, I know, Pastor, I know where you're going. You want to collect money. Is there a problem to you? It's not your money, right? <laughs> or we are disagreeing that God is God has called us to be steward. <laughs> I leave it there. I don't go further than that. Yeah, people are sensitive. I decided now I'm old enough, I'm not going to be sensitive about this. <laughs> because I realized one day while I was doing my scripture, and then God will look at you and say, Hey, are you a one talent guy? Yeah, but this part of your life. I gave you, right? I mean, you're supposed to do something with it. So when I, since you all want to know, prepare, prepare, and come back, and say, God, I have all this. I know that you are going to judge me, so I tell you I'm good steward. And God says to the one talent guy, you useless guy, you didn't do anything with it. So I think it's so important for us as a church to recognize that not just about time or talent and what we want to do, but what He has given us. Amen? And if we are stuck here like that and we cannot move forward, we're not led by the Spirit of God. Saying that, I keep it the head for that because people can be like, wow, I mean, I come to church, huh? I'm not led by the Spirit of God. Only you know. And the person who knows most is your spouse. Because if we are supposed to be conformed to the image of Christ, from that point, you're accepting Christ and coming towards that. Yes, no, there's no perfection. Yes, you know, we will stumble. Yes, we will fall. But if it has no, no change at all in your journey, you're still there as when you were when you became a Christian. No change in your mindset. No change in your behavior. No change in your attitude. Then perhaps you're not led by the Spirit of God. And if we go by that verse, if you're not led by the Spirit of God, you are not a child of God. I didn't say that, okay? It's in the scripture, okay? Now, the Holy Spirit is something that Jesus has already spoken about from the very beginning. 
from the very beginning, Luke 11 verse 13, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? How much more? If you know how to give good gifts, in other words, what you're saying is that the gift of the Holy Spirit is good. And God wants to give that gift. Now, if we don't want, He's not going to force it upon us. But He is giving that gift because it is a good gift. John 14, verse 16 and 17, I will ask the Father, He will give you another advocate to help you be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. Who will be in you? The Holy Spirit. Greater is He that is in than He that is in the... Who is in you? Most people say, Jesus. I thought Jesus went up already. Ascended, sit at the right hand side of God. The Spirit of God is in you. Doesn't diminish the role. Each of them have a role to play. Yeah? The Spirit of God is in us. Greater is He that is in us. But if we are not led by the Spirit of God, then it's a it is a careful, it's a reminder for us that we can quench the Spirit of God when He reminds us, when He convicts us to change. And we say, yeah, no, 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 I will do whatever I want. That's why we need to connect with the Holy Spirit. Yeah? The Holy Spirit becomes resident in us when we accept Christ. But for many, the Holy Spirit is not president of our lives. <laughs> in other words, He's not king. Sorry, yeah, we just play with the words resident, president. Yep. He comes to recite, but He does not have authority in your life. You still want to do whatever you want to do in your life. And therefore, we struggle with this issue. Yep. God gave us His Spirit. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us His Spirit. This is how we know we live in Him. We have the Spirit of God. And 1 Corinthians tells us it is not the Spirit of the world. It is the Spirit that comes from God so that we may understand what God has freely given us. That's the Spirit of God that God has released. When Jesus was glorified, the Holy Spirit came. Now, the, the period of time from ascension to Pentecost roughly is about 7 to 10 days. 7 to 10 days, depending on how you calculate it to be. Why do I say that? Because Pentecost is 50 days from Easter. Yeah? And Jesus was around on earth 40 days. So it balanced 10 days. So if you minus the three days of that crucifixion, resurrection period, there's about seven days. Okay? So some people say, uh, don't want to count. Minus those three, you know, then, okay, ten days. So it's about seven to ten days. Yep. So as Joe Moller says this, uh, Aaron Moller says this, as the Spirit abides in us, the full presence of God is among us and in us. Now, this is so important. Why? Because Jesus did not want to send His disciples to do the Great Commission without preparation let me let me tell you one thing uh, that that we when we read the bible we read from 21st century thing and we think it's it's like how it is when jesus tells them to go and make disciples of all nations go therefore yeah be witness in jerusalem judea all that there is no reference point you understand you you cannot say okay let's let's go and attend this course in tungling they will teach us how to do that there's none or maybe let's call another church, one of the mega church in town. And John says, there is none. What? Church hasn't come yet. Maybe we can look into Google. Oh, there's no internet. Net. What do we look for? Nothing. So that means the disciples have to think some ingenious, in, you know, genius plan to how to reach the rest of the world. In a hostile world, because the, the empire is under Romans, and the Romans do not take anybody who create issues lightly. Yeah. And they've seen that. The Romans crucified Jesus. Yeah. So, what were they going to do? How were they going to go Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria to the ends of the world? How were they going to go and baptize? You know, teach and getting people to obey and follow Christ. The only way possible, Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. And the word there is basically dunamis power. The word you get in English, dynamite power. 
Yeah, the one that caused an explosion in your heart, that will cause a difference in society because he comes to bring a change and bring a heart of man to God, to point. And that is so important because the work can never be done without the Holy Spirit. And so when we do our ministry today, when it's just about us, our genius plan, it's not that God never gave us brains to think, but we do pray so that we be led by the Spirit of God so that the ideas that we do, the things that we plan to do, be of God and not of our own flesh. Amen? Now, a lot of people might think, wow, it's only Acts 1.8 that Jesus talks about waiting, you know, in Jerusalem. Look in Luke 24. He opened their minds to understand the scripture. He said, yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die, rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message will be proclaimed in authority of his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. I don't think many people read it. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. And now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised, but stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. So it's not just in 1, Acts 1, verse 8. It's also in Luke 24. Jesus reminds them to wait in the city because the Holy Spirit is going to come. And that's why today's message is called Here in the Waiting. And I'm pulling it longer a bit so that you'll be like, Pastor, when are you going to start the sermon? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the patience of people to wait so that you can speak to each one of us here. We thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. How many days were there to wait? At least a week to 10 days. How many of us can wait 7 to 10 days? I've tried before in worship where we pause worship for 30 seconds. And you can find that people find it gully already. Some people are like, and then you pretend to lift up your hands to worship, but they're actually looking at your watch. Yeah? Sometimes we wear it the other way around, so it looks more nicer, but the watch is facing inwards. It's like, hey, so long, so long. I don't know why, quiet, quiet. You see a screen got no words, projectors, boy. We have an issue actually about waiting. And right now, I know some of us are waiting. When you are praying, you're waiting for God to release an answer. When you're in a situation, you're waiting for God to do something. And waiting is something that God wants to do in our lives for a purpose. Yeah. And for the disciples, as I say, they were given a big commission. That commission has not changed today. It's the same. We still are called to go. We still are called to move beyond where we are. And the next 10 years as a church, we'll see where we will go and whether we have a next generation here. Because people who are my age will be old. Now, people who are my age, Pastor, you say it so many times, I'm going to say it until I die. Because why? Because when I die, or you die, or he comes right before that, he's going to ask, what the world did you all do? Now, some of you say, yeah, yeah that's why I told him already, go sell group. Don't point finger, point at yourself. What are you doing with our, our lives? Because the next 10 years, next 20 years, what are we doing? Doesn't matter whether you are talent, play piano, no play piano, serving, praying, people dancing, whatever it is. What are you doing? Whether you're working in the market, what are you doing? What are you doing with your lives? Because the Holy Spirit has been given. Has been given. What are we doing? Let's read Acts chapter 1. Yep. It's a long passage. I'm going to read. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave the commandment, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. In a few days, he will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. They gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said, It is not for you to know the times or dates that the Father has set by his own authority. Look at the disciples. Jesus said, You know, wait in Jerusalem. He will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, the disciples had to think of their own plan. They still think about a physical, nationalistic kingdom. Straight away they ask Jesus, so when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus is like, I think he's long-suffering there. He's just like, probably take a pause there and say, it's not your business. <laughs> In nicer words, time and day is not for you to know. Yeah, that is a diplomatic way of saying, none of your business. Do what I tell you to do. Wait in Jerusalem. Yeah? 
We are in Jerusalem. For you will receive power when the Spirit of God comes on you. We were my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their eyes, and the cloud hid him from their sight. So what was the last thing Jesus said according to the Scriptures? You will receive power to be witness. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. There must be a secretary in the room. Yeah, you can record all the names, right? They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women. Generally, we know who the women are. Eh? Mary Magdalene and the others. Yep. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Acts verse 1, verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled, in which the Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field that he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. This, this is what we know about what happened to Judas. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this so that they called that field in language al kadama that is field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and another to take his place of leadership. Therefore, it was necessary to choose one of the men who had been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must be a witness with us of his resurrection. They nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. They prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over his apostolic, this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. They cast lots, and the Lord fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a loud sound like blowing of a violent wind came upon he from heaven, filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came and rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enables them. Long passage, yeah? But waiting on the Lord has a pause, very important thing, as I say. It's a testing of our character. It is a testing of our character. Yeah? When you wait for the promise, when you wait for an answer of the Lord, and if you are waiting right now for something God to move, it is a testing of your character. God is doing that work. That's the reason why God is changing us so that we'll be more and more like Christ. It is a testing of who we are. The true test of character is not how much we know how to do, but how we behave when we don't know what to do. And for the disciples, as I said, they did not know what to do. Yeah, they did not know what to do. When someone gives you such a big plan in those days, what are you going to do? No one knows. And that's why Jesus says, I will help you, I will give you the Spirit, and the Spirit will give you the power, and the power is to be a witness for me. And that's the challenge. Now, a couple of thoughts about waiting just to help us right now. Uh, if we are waiting for something, firstly, waiting is hard, but waiting has a purpose. Okay? When God asks you to wait, trust that He has a purpose. It is important. If you are praying for something to happen, you are praying for an answer, if you are praying for a breakthrough, if you are waiting for God to do something in this time for somebody, something in your life, you, may, you know that waiting is hard. Even in the physical itself, it's hard enough to just wait for the traffic jam and traffic light to clear. In fact, personally, I think the numbering in traffic light actually caused some people to have heart attack. You know, when the number goes down, you know, 10, 9, 8, and you want to go fast, and the guy in front of you is taking a slow drive. I can, I can probably sense many people's blood pressure going up. Right? And the lights start to flash. Because you want to beat that light. Yeah? Waiting is hard, but waiting has a purpose. And one of, that waiting, one of the things we need to realize is waiting, pro, waiting season is God's process to prepare us for His great plans. Very important to do that. When you embrace that, then you don't see waiting as a waste of time because in God, it's never a waste of time. Forty days in the wilderness for Jesus wasn't a waste of time. When He came out, He was full of the Spirit. Never a waste of time in God. You have to embrace it as a process, God's process of maturing us, dealing with things in our lives. And one of the great things He does in that waiting process is to create a thirst within us. 
if you have not been having a thirst for the Lord for a long time, you know, if you're not panted after the Spirit of the Lord, after God for a long time, waiting is always a great time because, you know, God wants to create that once again, that desire for Him. And as the scripture would say, in the psalmist would say, just like this parched and dry ground would want water. Yeah, that's what my soul longs for. Your water, your rain, your touch. And that's that longing that we need to have. Yeah. Singing, singing song on Sunday is great. For some people, if the song we like all on Sunday is all your favorite song, well, you'll be the most excited you know, person. But if the worship leader sings all the songs, you don't like one. Then some of you say, you mean God, there are songs people don't like. It's not your genre. Ma. It's not your taste. Or it's not what you like. So you don't really feel like worshipping that morning. Yeah, but it's sad when it happens to just based on what we like and don't like. You and I need to have that thirst once again for Him. Otherwise, prayer is only when we have problems. People get excited to pray when someone is sick, someone has an issue, someone has a problem. The rest of the time, we, we don't pray for what do we pray for? We pray for our nation. We pray for our children. We pray for our family. We pray for others in the church. We pray for ourselves. I joke with some people. You know, Hokkien has a word. Uh, a lot of Hokkien here, right? You know, Kao Tang, no? When you're about to die, right? Sorry, uh, my wife said, don't be so what? Uh. When you get older, you realize that any time is a good time to go. Correct or not? If you and I don't have a repentful heart and allow what God has done for us to stop 10 years ago and now we come to church to do the things of God with a tolerating spirit. In other words, I just come because people will expect to see my face. And I'm supposed to be a cell group leader, so therefore, I have to show my face. I'm just doing this, biding time. Biding time to what? For amazing grace? What, what are we biding time for? Because wherever you go, another state, another town, another church, whatever it is, the Spirit of God is the same. And the lesson that He wants to do is the same. Create thirstiness. It doesn't change one. The exams doesn't change. The lesson is the same to make you more and more like Christ. And that is so important for us to know. And for me personally, I'm sharing is this. The older I get, the realization that you, you better be more repentful. If suddenly you wake up one morning in the trumpet room, Bong! maybe that's the reason why the Bible talks about how don't let the sun go down when you have odds with your husband and wife. Just imagine, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, anyway, talk. Four o'clock in the morning. Come on. Oh no. I'm still offended with my wife. I think it's so important to understand. If you are going through the process of waiting, see it as God's way of creating a thirst and doing something in our lives. Waiting on the Lord requires patience. Patience to trust God even when circumstances, you know, hasn't changed yet. Amen? It's God's way, you know, of seeing if we will go ahead, you know, without Him. Waiting is God's way of seeing if we will trust Him before we move forward. Because if you take the disciples, Peter will be very impulsive. Okay, let's go and do this right now. Impulsiveness it's not what God wants. We do things as led by the Spirit of God. And that is so important because we all have so much of ourselves. And I think waiting, it does this to ourselves. It's, it's a dying to self, self-sufficiency. It's a dying to our plans and ideas. It's dying to our pride or fear. It's dying to our own ability and strength. Dying to our own wisdom in the wisdom of the world. It's dying to self. And if the last time you died to yourself and God did something was in a church camp 20 years ago, then it is sad. Don't you want a fresh encounter with Him? Not just hearing some missionaries come and talk about their story. And you're like, oh, so nice, man. You know, so nice. Eh? 
And that's where a lot of Christians do. They run from one church to another, hearing testimonies of some person who come back from overseas, missionary, you know, uh, the guy, sorry, who has no hands, no leg, I cannot pronounce his name. Yeah? I need to that, sorry. Sorry, he's online. I cannot get his name right. We are so excited about it. You know, that, wow, you know, God using, wah, 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 wah. but none of us will say, God, make me like him. None. I challenge any of you. None. Not that it's wrong to hear. Each of us have a journey to run. He has his journey to run. You and I have a journey to run. Yeah? But the journey can only be run when we die to ourselves so that God can do something in us. Our attitudes are an outward display of what God, what's taking place in our hearts. That's why for the worship team, we always say things, when you stand up here, it's a reflection of your current walk with God. But some people say, praise God, you're only on the stage. No, 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 no. It applies to everyone who serves. It reflects the current state of your walk with God. Even in the usher. So big, man. You're the usher. The first person uh, they see before the pastor is you. And it reflects your current state of your walk with God. And right now, if you are working outside there, people see Christ, those who don't see Christ, yeah, it's based on your attitude. And your attitude reflects what God is doing in, currently in your life. And if nothing is happening in your life right now, what you reflect in your attitude will be seen by the world. Think about that. A.B. Simpson says this, waiting days were necessary to enable the disciples to realize their need, their nothingness, their failure, their dependence upon the Master. They had to get emptied first before they get filled. And I think it's what we need as a church. We need to get empty so that we can get filled afresh. Amen? Not that we spend time talking about the past. Yeah. Some people will get, last time, last time, last time was good. The coming days is greater. That's the point we keep saying in praise, right? The greater days will come. Greater things will He do. That means greater than before. La. Amen? Waiting on God reminds us that God is in control. In other words, we are saying He is God. We are not God. God is in charge. The psalmist says this, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits and in His word. I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchman wait for the morning. You know, in those days, the watchman has a very diligent, intentional job. Their job is to watch in case of any enemy comes, in case of any disaster, impending disaster. They are constantly alert. So the waiting that the Bible talks about is not that you sit there and lie down on bed, he may give me, ah, ah, ah. it's not. It is an intentional, alert kind of waiting. It is that waiting that like a watchman, and you are seeing, yeah, it's coming. Yes. I see that. Remember Elijah when he prayed for rain? Yeah? I think at his age and that's those times, he has very good eyesight. I would not be able to see the cloud like a face of a man in the distance. I don't know about you. Yeah? In Malaysia, got a lot of clouds. Huh? I don't know how big many clouds are there in, in, in Israel. Unless it's totally blue sky and then one white cloud in the size of the face of a man. In that. And he says, rain is coming. <laughs> Most of us will be, I have one cloud only. La. And it's not even black. So sure no rain one. But he could see. He was alert. And waiting in, on the Lord calls for the alertness, intentional part of the believer to trust God. In my entire life, I know, sorry, la, this, I, I shared this before, I've been to only one restaurant where I've never seen an over-alert waiter before in my life. You know, so much so I cannot lift out my hands to stretch. Also. In this one particular restaurant, it's closed already. La. Maybe he over-alertness of the waiter. <laughs> you know, I was just like, oh, yes, sir, what do you want? It's like, uh, nothing. I'm still like, trying to lift my hand and knee, you know. You know, you can't, you can't do anything. You know, alertness. I think it goes with that same thing when you go for an auction. You don't want to accidentally lift your hands. Yes, I see that hand. That alertness of that guy. And you know, we need that kind. Alert, 
like that watch. More than a watchman watch for the day. If you're a watchman, you're working all night long, you cannot wait for it to dawn and say, morning's coming, somebody else is going to take my shift. Yeah. And it says that it is a greater, yeah, a greater alertness than just the watchman itself. Waiting on the Lord allows God to do His work. Yeah. God works while we wait. There's something we must know. If you look at the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, 400 years of silence, a lot of people think God never spoke, so therefore He never did anything. God was doing something and did something. And so if you want to know more, go for New Testament survey. Okay? Isaiah 64 verse 4 says, For since the world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for Him. Who works? God works for those who wait for Him. And the scripture says, In His time, He makes all things beautiful. Yeah? And so, just like the song says, even if I don't see it, even if I don't feel it, you know the song? He still does it because He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, like of the darkness. And so if you don't feel it, you don't see it, that's in the physical because God is doing something. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it till the coming of Christ. And right now, if you are listening, you say, Pastor, so boring. Nah. He's still doing something in you. He's still doing something in you. See, only you believe. Nah. I believe because my God is big. Nah. He has to be bigger than whatever nonsense I might say. He has to be bigger than even your lack of pay and attention, for example. He has to be bigger than that. Otherwise, why do we worship? Yeah. Waiting on God builds my strength. It actually makes us stronger, not weaker. A lot of people think that if I don't go and do something right now, nobody says waiting on the Lord. Nah. You just sit at home, just um, um. Christians don't um. Man. We have nothing to look at our navel except to clean it. Yeah? We don't have to look at it. Our call is to meditate on His Word and then go and do what God has called us to do. While all the time keeping our eyes on Him. And therefore, it builds strength. That's why the Scripture tells us those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar with wings like eagles. They will run and not go weary. They will walk and not faint. That is so important for us to know. Now I say, Pastor, I'm waiting for you to end. Coming ready. You know why we look at the clock? Because we want to make sure that you do not stay in this place more than two hours for your health. <laughs> huh? When we look at the scriptures from Acts 12 to 24 and 26, the disciples were not sitting there doing nothing. They were praying. Yeah, They trusted God for His timing. They didn't know how long to wait. In the scriptures you read, Jesus didn't tell them how long to wait. No line, no, no time. Yeah? They connected with like-minded believers. The 120 had to be people who believe in the same thing. Know that God is going to do something, ready to receive what God wants to release upon them. And that is so important. Like-minded believers. When we don't have like-minded in the business world, you cannot do things. So. In whatever world, it's very hard. There's no unity. For the disciples, they had to. That's why it is not a revelation when the Spirit of God came and He says, and they were in one accord. Because they were in one accord from the moment they gathered to wait. You get what I'm saying? Like-minded believers. They stay close to God through His Word and they make decisions. They pick a new disciple. It wasn't that they're doing nothing. They prayed and they made, they chose a new disciple. They prayed about their decision. So it was an active time of waiting. It was a time where they worship, they prayed, they read the scripture, they make decisions. They were a people who were like minded. And that's what we see in that book of Acts. So when the Spirit of God came on Acts chapter 2, they were ready to receive Him. And that is something. As a people of God, we need to have. Very individually or corporately as the body of Christ. We need that. Like-minded believers. Amen? Waiting on the Lord helps us to focus on His purpose, His direction for our lives that God wants to do in each one of us. And that is so important. 
I do not know what you are waiting for. I do not know what you are believing for. I do not know what you are hoping for God to do something in your life right now. You say, God, where are you? But waiting, if God brings you a place of waiting, then allow Him to take you through. Now, sometimes waiting does not change our circumstances, but change us. Yeah? Then you say, then what's the point of praying? I don't know. Maybe please go and ask uh, Brother Wick, Nick. What is his name again? Yeah, the guy that has no hands and legs. You can ask him. I'm sure he prayed. You can ask Joni Erickson. I'm sure she prayed. And many people prayed for her. And today, if she was in Malaysia, we would invite her to preach. But we would have to build a ramp because she will be coming up on a wheelchair. Likewise, you can ask uh, Pastor Wong Kim Kong, who came before. I'm sure many people prayed for him. But I remember we had to carry him up on stage on a wheelchair. He said, wow, like that, what's the point of praying? Sometimes it has nothing to do with the physical. Change has to do with the inside of us. And sometimes we cannot accept that. And we cannot accept God's way of feeling us. And we struggle with that. It is not they say, oh, no choice, la, you know, inshallah, la, whatever, la, will be, will be. It's really too bad. No. It is trusting God takes us through. Nowhere does the Bible say when you become a Christian, there is no suffering and no pain. In fact, there can be more suffering and more pain. Really, uh, which part of the scripture? I don't know. Hey, Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith talks about many who were chained, sawn into two, walk around naked. That part of the scripture we don't read. We read a lot of theology that tells us, you know, when you come to Christ, you will be extra fatat. You will drive a Mercedes Benz. You will never be sick. Really, you will never be sick. <laughs> yeah. And that's why even with the COVID, you will no favor. Wait a minute, but now we to say that Christians who went to hospital and died and buried had no faith. Some of them were pastors. In fact, the first person in Malaysia to die of COVID was a pastor. He's on my Facebook. Are we saying, that? that guy, no faith. Wow. I wouldn't want to be near you because you answer to God. This is a dangerous thing. What God wants to do, we don't know. But we trust that God is much bigger than our perception and understanding. And that's why the waiting period oftentimes is to kill the nonsense that is in us. Because if we are still there, we no longer have a spirit of slavery, Paul says in Romans 8. We are not bound to that past. We are free. We are now have the spirit of adoption in which the spirit of God confirms in us that we are His children and we have been given the privilege to call Him Abba Father. Now that we are in Christ. But if you are still here and the spirit of God cannot do anything to move you from there to being conformed to His image, then as the scripture says, we are not led by the spirit of God. And we are not led by the spirit of God. We are not children of God. And therefore, we need the Holy Spirit. Regardless of what your understanding of the Holy Spirit is, He is not a kakiak servant put there for the fun of it. You know, He's there to come alongside you, to pace with you and say, this is how you run the race. You need my power. You need my anointing. You need my wisdom. You need it in order to do everything that God has called you to do. He said, witness, I'm not good in, in speaking. Witness in every aspect of your life. If you are a doctor, be the best witness there. If you are a cha kui tiao seller, be the best witness frying the cha kui tiao. Yeah? Even doctors go and eat the cha kui tiao. This means sometimes the cha kui tiao guy drives a bigger car than a doctor. I don't know about you. Yeah? Otherwise, there won't be tons of restaurants there. Everything that God has given you, you are be a witness. So they let your light so shine so that men will see the good works that you're doing. And that is the witness. You speech by action. And that is what we need to be His people. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we know that this is a topic that we either know about it or don't want to know about it. Or, yeah, 
Okay, lah, Pastor, we know about it. But Lord, we pray that we will be a people who choose to want to come and know you. Oh, Lord, and where we are right now in our walk with you, Lord, Father, we, we just ask that you take us to the next level of things that you want to do in us. Whatever perception, ideas, oh Lord, things that we know, we think, or even we say it's you that tells us to do. Father, oh Lord, let it be of you so that we be refreshed, we be strengthened, we be empowered, oh Lord, to do the things that you call us to do in, in the coming days. So that we as Christians, wherever you set us in our homes, in our colleges, in our business, in church, outside in the community, we make a difference as your witness because it is not by power, not by might, but by your spirit. We pray that we will embrace, a oh Lord, moments of waiting, moments of silence before you so that you, Lord, can speak so clearly. You, Lord, can point us. You can refresh us, oh Lord, and direct us accordingly so that your works will be done and that we will be those, the stewards, oh Lord, and servants of your most high God, oh Lord. So, Lord, this day we commit ourselves to you. Father, and whatever is said, Lord, that is not of you, put it one side. Whatever that you want to impress in each one of us, Father, impress in each one of us. So that, Holy Spirit, you can do what you want to do in each one of our lives. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just stand, even as we close. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let's try something different. Let's close with a song. <laughs> Since I'm the only one up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For you are great. You do mighty wonders, Lord. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do mighty wonders, Lord. There is no one else like you. There is no. going to sing that part again. We know you know the words. In whatever circumstances you are in, right now, if you're weary, you're tired, you're not well, or you're bling or something, would you just take a moment, just worship Him and declare those things as we sing that He is great, He is mighty. For you are great, you do mighty one. There.
Father, we just stand before you in whatever situations we are going through in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you move in us. Holy Spirit, you stir once again, oh Lord, your waters, oh Lord. Cause a thirst within our hearts, oh Lord, for you. Remove, oh Lord, the dryness, oh Lord. Take away the lethargy, break down walls of pain and hurts, oh Lord, oh Lord and struggles, oh Lord. Once again, God, I will be like that watchman, Lord. Thirsting after you, Lord. Father, oh Lord, once again I embrace who you are, that you are great and mighty in my life. Even if I don't see it and don't feel it, Father, oh Lord, I choose to wait on you, knowing, Lord, you do works, greater works, mighty works that changes me, changes my circumstances, brings that breakthrough, Lord. Lord, I embrace, Lord, the truth. In you, I live, I move, and have my being. In you, Lord. Just take a moment, just worship you. If you go out to sing in the Spirit. as we go we acknowledge Lord you are our God there is no one else but you that our lives are not dictated by our circumstances but Lord we are led by your spirit in this day Father we choose to acknowledge your great presence your amazing grace your goodness your greatness in our lives in the midst of your people that Lord send Lord your spirit to guide to encourage to refresh to build to stir within us to once again empower us for the things you call us to and so this day Father we lean on those promises we rest in oh Lord your amazing promises which are yes and amen in Christ and we know that we are not alone even as we go for you are with us oh Lord and in our weakness your strength is made perfect 
and as we run this race that you call us to, we have an encourager that runs alongside us, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And now as you go, may the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and indeed the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you need any personal prayer, do come forward. We will pray for you. Thank you. God bless all of you. See you next Sunday. It's Mother's Day. Do invite your friends and mothers to come. We have Pastor Reverend Ng Mon Ti who will be sharing the word. Please sign up also for Baptism of the Holy Spirit yes. workshop. Please see Patricia Tan downstairs. Thank you. Yeah, for the workshop, please sign up with Sister Pat.